Greetings, may the grace, peace, and love of God find you exactly where you are. Today, what I want you to do is I want you to tune in to this broadcast today. Tune into the broadcast and listen to what thus says the Lord. God has a word for every situation. God has a, situ God has a word for situations of joy. He has a word for situations of pain. Wherever you find yourself today, in joy or pain, God has a word for you today. Tune in, receive what thus says the Lord. It was no ordinary night, but I hear a lonely man. There was a holy Jesus child, tenderly he lays on me to find the heavens and the earth were filled with praise. Exciting times of the year. Amen. Christmas, there are the expectation of gifts, 
there are bright lights, pretty colors, and everybody seems to be having a party. Again, Christmas is one of the most exciting times of the year. But what Christmas is truly about is about the arrival of salvation. Arrivals are joyous events. If you take a moment and consider when you've traveled, possibly a great distance, there's a sense of excitement and in fact relief to know that you've made it to your destination. Arrivals again are joyous events. Children, even I experienced in the coming in this, in this week, children, grandchildren actually, they, 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 they're, they're anticipating and awaiting the arrival of grandparents. Mm -hmm. And the arrival is exciting and emotional, and there is a bubbly effervescence to arrivals. One arrival that I remember of mine in particular was the arrival at Honolulu Airport mm -hmm. in Hawaii. The landing of the plane in paradise was extremely exciting. And in fact, it was a landing that, that I'll never, never forget. Because if you've ever landed, if you've ever seen, ever been to the airport in, in Honolulu, Hawaii, the airport is right on, on the coast, right next to the ocean. The airport is right there ne next to the ocean and land right there where the airport is, is limited. They have a limited amount of land, and in fact, the terrain, the area, the geography surrounding the airport, it, it, it's, it's mountainous. It, it, but there's a smooth patch right there where the airport is. And I remember, in fact, this airport landing. I, I remember it distinctly. It's a landing that, in fact, I, I will never forget because this landing, it, 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 actually, it, it actually entailed and involved a steep and quick descent and a hard and fast stop. All right now. Again, arrivals are exciting. And see, with this steep, quick descent and this hard, fast stop, I, I was excited to get off the plane. Not, 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 not for fear of my flight, but, but due to the excitement of arriving in what's paradise. The, the arrival of salvation, understand, in your life also is sometimes the same. Someone can speak, someone can testify, in fact, that just this year you, you had an arrival of God, you had an arrival of a miracle, you had an arrival of your deliverance, you had an arrival in your life that was steep and quick. All right. and, and you stopped hard and fast. But understand, that's the, sometimes that's how God works with the arrival of salvation. Well, when we look into the text, what we see is Jesus coming down through 42 generations. Can I tell you that was steep and quick? It was steep and quick because how do you take eternity and mash up eternity into 42 generations? It was a steep, quick, fast descent. And then there's a hard stop when you get to Calvary where the light of Jesus Again, the arrival, the arrival, the arrival, the arrival of salvation, and the arrival of salvation in our life is sometimes also the same. Now, I've had quick descents and hard stops, but Lord, thank you for what I'm about to experience. Because whenever the Lord gives you a quick descent and a hard stop, I, I can promise you that God is up to something. The arrival of salvation. Let me just talk about salvation for a quick minute. Because salvation, 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 it, 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 theologically it's a word that's called soteriology or, or soteria. And soteriology or salvation is synonymous with redemption. It, it's synonymous with taking something that is worth nothing, me, and making it worth something. That, that's what salvation is truly all about. Now some theologians actually divide salvation into three phases. They say that there is initial salvation, there is progressive salvation, and there is final salvation. Uh -huh. uh, or let, let's say it this way. Uh, initial salvation is accepting Christ. Progressive salvation is following Christ. And final salvation is when you look like Christ. That's what salvation is. Or again, let, let's say it this way, uh, using some theological terminology. E initial salvation is regeneration. Progressive salvation is sanctification. And final salvation is glorification. But, but that's what salvation is. So what we celebrate on December 25th, the birth of Jesus, is the arrival of salvation. A C.H. C.H. Spurgeon, C.H. Spurgeon, as it relates to salvation, says this. He says that I, he says that he's learned. He says, I learned from the scriptures that repentance is just as necessary as salvation, is just as necessary to salvation as faith is. 
And then he goes on and says, and faith without repentance is going, or actually, the need to be repented of. Well, get that now. What he says again is this. He says that as it relates to salvation, you have to have repentance. And then he says you also have to have faith. And all of them tie into salvation. Now, get this in the beginning. Salvation begins with repentance. As Jesus says, repent, because the kingdom of hand is at near. So it begins with repentance, and then you grow through the progressive, you grow to the final salvation through faith. All of them are essential and connected to salvation. Augustine, Augustine, church father, Augustine says this, he says that he who created us without our help will not save us without our consent. And so salvation, we have to first consent to the will of God, consent to allowing and actually submitting to God's will, and that's essential to Salvation. One more, one more, I'll get to the text, one more. John MacArthur, John MacArthur as it relates to salvation says this, he says this, he says, the question of salvation is not whether or not Jesus is Lord, but whether or not we're submissive to his lordship. Can I just pause right there for a minute and let someone know today that that's the real question of salvation? Because it's not a question of whether or not Jesus is Lord, because Jesus is Lord. But it's the question of whether or not we submit ourselves to his lordship. Jesus is Lord because he was with God in the beginning when he created the heavens and the earth. He's Lord. Jesus is Lord because he walked the dusty streets of Jerusalem and raised the dead. Jesus is Lord because this miracle was in the palm of his hand. I know that Jesus is Lord, but the question of salvation is not whether or not Jesus is Lord. The question of salvation is are we submissive? To his lordship, to salvation, salvation again. The arrival, the arrival of salvation. When we look, when we look at the text, what we find in the text is we find the story of the text that Joseph and Mary they they were engaged. They were they were they were engaged to be married, but Mary was great with child. Joseph, Matthew would tell you that Joseph Joseph wanted to put her away, but the angel came and told Joseph, "Don't put her away. This is actually the work of God." So here now, Joseph is where actually Caesar Augustus Caesar Augustus had has set out a decree. He put out a decree and said that everybody needs to be taxed. He, so everybody had to go to their home country, homeland, place of their birth, place where their family came from. So Joseph and Mary have to travel some 60 miles from Nazareth. And if you notice, it, it actually it's an uphill journey. They went from Nazareth uphill all the way to, to Bethlehem. And here Mary is great with child pregnant going uphill to, to Bethlehem actually because God actually was working through Caesar Augustus. So when they get to uh, when they get to Bethlehem, that Mary, Mary, who's great with child, gives birth to the baby Jesus, gives birth to Jesus. When she gives birth to Jesus, she wraps him in swaddling cloths, she lays him in a manger, and then later part of the text, when you get to 8 through 20, what you find is shepherds in the field ran into angels, and the angels told the shepherds what took place, and the shepherds left the sheep in the field and came to see about Jesus. That's that, 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 that's the story. That's the story of, of the arrival of salvation. But let me just give you a little bit of insight with this also because when you look at the text, one of the things it says that while she was there, she had the child. Now, we often like to think about the Christmas story in terms of as she, she got there and when she got there she couldn't find a place and had a child the same night, but the text don't say that. The text just says while she was there. So, so we don't know when she had the baby, but sometime while she was there, possibly they traveled there early. Possibly they traveled there early to make sure that she was stationary and in a place where she could have the baby. We don't know. But when we look at the text, you understand that it didn't necessarily happen as soon as she got there. But, but now, but now, now the story, the story, the story of the text again. Luke, Luke gives us the only inspired account of Jesus' birth. Now let me give you also a little bit of history before I give you the holy. A uh, little, little bit of history before I give you the holy. Now, the events that are given here in this text are, are, are important. 